Hello and welcome to WePC. My name is Jay and today I'll be taking you through the Intel i3 and i5 CPUs and choosing which is the best for your build. Each processor line has several seemingly similar models and this can be very confusing if you're not sure what you're looking for. So we'll outline each processor in both lines and compare the spec. This will let us see where each line shines so that you can choose which one is best for you. The i3 line shines for budget and casual gamers, along with anyone looking to use their computer to do simple tasks such as word processing, web browsing, etc. as it ranges from only $130 to $180. There are low powered T and overclockable K models available to choose from, along with the non-modified models. None of the models in the i3 line are unlock for turbo boost so they won't auto overclock when under heavy load which means unless you go for the 8350k and overclock it you are stuck with the processor always at one core none of the models in the i3 line are unlocked for turbo boost so they won't auto overclock when under heavy load which means unless you go for the 8350k and overclock it you are stuck with the processor always at one speed the i5 line really shines if you're looking to get past 60 fps in AAA games or even break into 1440p gaming the line is also great at multitasking and processor intensive tasks such as streaming and content creation and it ranges from 170 dollars to 260 dollars like the i3 line, the i5 also gives us non-modified models along with lower power T and overclockable K models to choose from. Unlike the i3 line though, we now see turbo boost unlocked, allowing for better efficiency as the processors can idle at a lower clock speed when not in use. This makes the i5-8400T an excellent choice as it's already a 35 watt TDP and can idle down to an easy 1.7 gigahertz, but still have enough reserve for gaming when needed. The lower the TDP, the less power it will consume and the less heat it will generate. Intel's latest 9th gen i3 CPUs come with four physical cores and the i5s come with six. This is an important factor to consider if you're gaming and specifically what types of games you're looking to play. Lesser demanding games can take advantage of two cores, whereas higher end AAA games can very much make use of the six. So generally speaking, for light gaming and everyday use of your computer, the i3 would suit you well. And for more demanding use for gaming, media production, etc., the i5 will be perfect. Both the i3 and i5 boast around 3.6 to 4 gigahertz of clock speed, which honestly shouldn't hinder your decision too much, but it is a good starting point to talk about overclocking. Now, overclocking is the process of pushing your processor past its advertised speeds. We do this to bring out some extra performance, but also comes with some drawbacks primarily heat buildup, which can be counteracted with a good CPU cooler. If you are new to Intel CPUs, then any of their CPUs ending with the letter K means that they are unlocked and ready for overclocking. It's not necessary to overclock, especially when most of the juice is taking from your GPU. Another note to touch upon is integrated graphics. Apart from the newer F series, most Intel CPUs feature integrated graphics, which is a bonus to consider if you are looking to save money and not get a GPU right now, but do so at a later date. Both the i3 and i5 have the same UHD 630 integrated graphics, so on this field, they are very level and it's definitely worth considering. One very important thing to consider when choosing between the i3 and i5 is what the rest of your build will feature. If you are using a GPU instead of utilizing the integrated graphics, then you need to make sure there isn't any bottleneck taking place. Bottlenecking is a term for when a GPU is paired with a weaker CPU, meaning that the component isn't able to push out its full performance due to being dragged down by the older component. So with that in mind, in this case, the i3 works with mid-range GPUs like the GTX 1060, and the i5 would allow for higher-end cards like the RTX 2060. Okay, and the last thing to consider is the price. In its simplest form, the i3 is usually around half the price of the i5 models, with the i3 range costing around $100 to $150 and the i5 at $150 to $300. So for those with budget builds that want to do some light gaming and use their computers for everyday use, the i3 is perfect. And then the i5 is for those looking for a higher end gaming experience where graphical fidelity is of the most importance. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Would you like us to do an i5 versus i7 or an i7 versus i9 video? Please definitely let us know in the comments and I can get on that for you right away. If you enjoyed this video, I would love if you could leave a like on it, subscribe if you are new to our channel, and if you hit over there, that'll take you to another one of our YouTube videos that we know that you will enjoy. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.